receive proper aware wireless multimedia streaming, rather energy efficient approach. Um, and he's a PhD student at Aalto University uh, in Finland. Or not one of the closer cousins when I came. Uh, so. uh, thank you. Well, uh, these are the contributions uh, of our work, actually. What we did, uh, we wanted to save energy in case of this TCP-based uh, multimedia streaming. Uh, of course, the saving energy at the smartphones. So we found out that, that TCP receive buffer can act as a secondary buffer at the uh, mobile client along with the playout buffer. And uh, TCP flow control can actually this expose this clear buffer uh, information. And based on this uh, observations, actually, we model the uh, tail energy consumption of uh, burst to TCP traffic. And we found that, that if the, uh, uh, when shaping traffic, if the size of a burst ex exceeds player buffer and then also this TCP receive buffer, then energy consumption increases. And after that, uh, based on the model, we implement an energy or multimedia streaming system that we call eStreamer. And uh, we evaluated the performance of eStreamer when a mobile client uh, streams using Wi-Fi or 3G or LT. And uh, we found that significant energy savings is possible. So. Uh, uh, I will begin with this, uh, how uh, uh, multimedia streaming works, and then uh, how this traffic shaping and uh, so on. So in case of uh, multimedia streaming, that uh, a streaming server actually begins with fast start uh, uh, to send content to the client, and then uh, uh, sends content to the client at the encoding rate or a little bit higher rate. Uh, uh, higher rate of the encoding rate to the client. Uh, and uh, this is actually the constant uh, bitrate streaming scenario. And uh, in the during the first state, uh, uh, first start, actually why first start is used. This actually, uh, 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 using first start, uh, streaming server sends actually very high rate, uh, uh, sends at a very high rate uh, to the client. And this is used uh, uh, for several purposes. One is this uh, reduce the playback uh, delay at the client, another is this guard, this bandwidth fluctuation the a streaming client can face during the uh, playback. And how much time this player can tolerate this kind of delay uh, is we call this, uh, in this case, Tmax. And if the content is uh, sent during first start is L and the encoding rate is R, so it can tolerate Tmax amount of delay during the playback. And uh, this is one scenario that how multimedia traffic shaping works. So uh, this is one proxy-based scenario that uh, during uh, the first uh, the proxy forwards the traffic, but after that it uh, starts uh, buffering data from the server for some amount of time. So in that case it is T and we call it this burst interval. So when it buffers for T amount of time and it sends as a single burst to the client. and. Uh, between this conjugacy bus, this uh, mobile client doesn't receive anything, so it can uh, uh, go into the low power consuming state. Yeah, and, uh, and the it is uh, actually w well established uh, uh, option for the researchers uh, for to save energy. Actually, in case of this multimedia streaming. Yeah. So uh, how long this uh, this proxy can actually buffer is the also this limited by Tmax. That uh, uh, that amount of data actually this client receives th during the first start phase. So, in case of this TCP-based uh, streaming, that uh, uh, with the burst size or this burst interval uh, increases. So, at the beginning, we see this for uh, small kind, small rate uh, audio streaming. That at some point, this power consumption uh, begins to increase again, so decreasing. So, so what is the reason for this actually why this is happens so in case of udp based streaming that uh, uh, what we uh, studied or found that, that uh, well you can increase the bar size you can save more energy but at some point when this player buffer is filled uh, the player will face this uh, 
packet loss and this quality is compromised. So uh, in that case, the scenario is different. Actually, the power, power consumption increases. But the obviously, this TCP, so uh, there is no uh, packet loss. And uh, to the beginning of the uh, modeling, I, uh, this does some uh, um, data regarding this the wireless interfaces behavior that actually this uh, this different kind of wireless interfaces uh, possess some tail energy, exhibit some tail energy. Yeah. And in case of Wi-Fi, uh, this is due to the idle period timeout after every data transmission around 200 milliseconds. And in case of 3G or HSP, it is around uh, yeah T1. There are three timers, uh, 10 seconds, fi around 5 seconds, and the other one is around 30 minutes. And LTE, in that case, there are uh, also two kind of timers. One is RFC timers and this DRX. So actually, uh, previously, uh, we saw this power consumption increases. So uh, here, the exp uh, on the way to the explanation, actually, that what happens actually when this TCP-based uh, uh, traffic shaping. So we see that uh, the client is decoding some kind of block, and it, ha it has some uh, data at the media player. And when, when the, this uh, player buffer is filled, this data starts gathering at the TCP buffer. And when the finally the TCP buffer is filled, this TCP flow control actually is activated. So there is some data waiting at the server. So in that case, this client this buffer is completely filled. So uh, since uh, TCP is a reliable protocol, so there would not be so uh, no uh, packet loss. But we can can find two things that actually this uh, TCP receive buffer can also the from this figure that also can act as a secondary buffer in case of this TCP based multimedia traffic shaping. So the uh, uh, the potential of saving is a little bit higher than uh, I would say in case of this ED EDP based streaming, where the, they have this fixed buffer. So uh, we uh, model the tail energy consumption of this burst it is traffic. Tra so we found that this, from the model, we showed that this, this tail energy increases, that uh, if tail energy decreases, this as long as this burst size actually uh, smaller than this, this player back buffer and also the TCP buffer. Otherwise, uh, it increases when this burst actually exceeds this playback buffer and also the TCP receive buffer. So uh, we and we found that um, yeah, since it is a TCP very upper uh, 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 comparatively the upper than the physical layer, so this actually holds for any kind of wireless interface being used for streaming, either Wi-Fi or uh, 3G or LTE. So now we see uh, th this actually happens that when this uh, this client buffer cannot client cannot hold the whole bus together. So TCP flow control activates, and so actual burst is actually we can see that split into small one big burst, then some small burst, and this TCP flow control. So this is the actually the uh, main reason actually we saw this after some period this power consumption increases. So uh, based on that uh, model, uh, we uh, developed an energy array streaming system that is called eStreamer. And uh, we implemented the heuristic that I said that this power consumption is increases if the bus size exceeds uh, TCP receive buffer. And as we have seen the earlier slide that actually TCP exposes by this uh, zero window advertisements, the, the client buffer status. So it uses this uh, information actually to select that on an energy optimal burst size. So it has two components. One is traffic profiler and uh, another is traffic shaper. The traffic shape profiler actually checks the X for this window size advertised by the client. So whenever it finds a window size zero, so it can immediately guess that, OK, this client buffer is full. So it will not, uh, this traffic shaper would take care of in that case that how much, what would be the next bar size. So uh, in that way, actually, it finds an uh, optimal bar size when there will be no zero in advertisement and power consumption will be low. So that's called, we call it this optimal bar size. So.
this is one case uh, with real measurement that uh, when this optimal bar size is smaller than T max. So this happens that, for example, uh, in the fifth round or the fifth number of bursts, it finds this zero advertisement and then it decreases this burst interval or burst size. Actually, we use this binary search approach in that case because uh, if we would increase the burst interval one by one, actually that would take uh, quite long time to reach to this optimal. So that was the reason. And uh, this is another case uh, with LTE that when it finds this uh, uh, Tmax. So. so we, we found that actually we, we had a measurement with uh, four or five devices, but here here we uh, for three devices is that uh, Nokia N900 can. Yeah, this is for audio streaming and this rest of the two for video streaming uh, with YouTube. Yeah, uh, that's all. Thanks. I'm I'm sort of wondering you're you're making a lot of guesses on uh, you know when the radio will be turned off. Uh, in how far would you be helped if the lower layers uh, gave you this information and told you uh, you know you now have half a second and if you don't transmit within that half a second I will turn the radio off. So you're saying that uh, for to getting information from the lower layer. Yeah, if the lower layers would give you that information. Because it seems that if you you know if you get over the hill and 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 you transmit two long bursts, uh, then your your efficiency decreases again. Yeah. So I'm I'm wondering, is there any sort of information that the lower layers could provide you that well, would uh, make allow you to make more optimal decisions? Uh, well, in that case, when burst is sent, it is sent. I mean, uh, to the lower layer. I mean, for example, in case of uh, when it goes to the TCP. Uh, when it exceeds that client TCP receive buffer, I don't have any control over it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I cannot do anything. But uh, I was trying to seek that whether I can uh, take away the data from TCP somehow or make the TCP to drop that packets and uh, I will do that again from the application layer. That's the probably the best case I can do, but I'm not sure about it. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? Uh, quick question: You, you don't assume adaptive streaming in this case, is that correct? All uh, right. Have you thought about this, and have you thought about how this would apply to an uh, adaptive well streaming uh, approach? Uh, this is kind of. Uh, well, I uh, thought it for this. Uh, if this sensor devices. You would use this TCP IP protocol. I don't know actually whether they use. So in that case, I've seen that people are using this for multimedia streaming as well. So that would be the one of the best case for this. And uh, for adaptive streaming, uh, actually, since it's mostly client dep dependent, so in that case, actually, uh, client makes the decision. So it it is well aware about this buffer. That actually, what's happening is in the application. So it is most unlikely. But if the server would do the, I mean, this uh, rate control by itself, then this could be applied. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay. That my job is done. Let's thank all the three speakers again. Thank you.